to another video in this video we're going to go over solving and evaluating something that we've actually done in class together and uh done it without you probably even noticing that you're doing it but here we're kind of intentionally going to go over it so i want to start us off well what's our equation well remember this is the y-intercept is always my starting value so four now are you increasing or decreasing well when you make your next dot that's on the grid you'll notice you had to go up right it's not down so that means tells you it's positive we're increasing well we're gonna how much are we increasing by we're going up two over one so up two right that means two here we're going up two one two and then over one over one is underneath well what's two divided by one well that's just two so four plus two times x again uh, <laughs> multiplication is a shortcut for addition right because all we're going to do is always add we're always going to add two and then we're going to go over one up two over one just kind of what we did in the previous videos okay all right so here's our equation now again we can rewrite this equation to be y is equal to 2x plus 4 it's really just up to you to decide what you prefer prefer i'll show you both ways so when it says evaluate when x equals 1 this means we want to plug in 1 for x and look at the graph when x is 1 what is your y value well it's right here so when x is 1 i'll maybe put it in dark when x is 1 my y value is 6 and if we use our equation, we better get that. So let me show you both ways, okay? So over here, we have y is equal to 4 plus 2 times 1. I like to put parentheses. Okay, so y is equal to, well, we always do the multiplication first. What's 2 times 1? That's just 2. And then what's 4 plus 2? We get 6. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 6. Or we can write it as 1 comma 6, which is exactly what is shown on the graph. Over here, it doesn't really matter. Well, where's the x located at? Well, right over here. So plug in 1 in for the for the x plus 4. What's 2 times 1? Well, my friends, we get 2. 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. So we get y is equal to 6. So see, it doesn't really matter um, how we write the equation. We still get the same result. Okay, solve for x when y equals 2. Now, notice in this scenario, we're no longer going to look, we're no longer plugging a number in for x. What we want to do is plug in a number in for y. And so let's look at the graph. When y is 2, well, this is my y-axis, this is my x-axis, correct? Correct. Now, on the y-axis, where is 2 at? Well, 2 is right here. And so now, if you were to draw this little line here, when does it, where does it touch your graph? Well, it touches your graph right here. Well, when your y value is 2, it touches it here. Okay. Well, what's the x value? Well, the x value is negative 1. So just by looking at the graph, okay, when your y value is 2, your x value is negative 1. And let's use the equation to do that. And we'll do both of them. And you can kind of decide which one you prefer. So let's go over here. We have y is equal to 4 plus 2x. And over here we have y is equal to 2x plus 4. Well, we're plugging in uh 2 for y so 2 is equal to 4 plus 2x 2 is equal to 2x plus 4 okay now whenever we're solving we always want to get rid of any addition or subtraction and look at this 4 here is this 4 positive or negative well it's positive and the reason why my friends is because it doesn't say anything right if it showed a negative symbol then you know it's negative but because it just shows a positive you know it's a positive so how do we get rid of anything that's we know these are adding how do you get rid of anything that's adding well you subtract it so we subtract to both sides of the equation if you do one thing on one side you have to do it to the other so here we have two minus four now the way i like to think of this is we have two filled in pebbles represents uh two filled in pebbles will represent positives and two empty pebbles will represent negatives okay you can think of this as like holes in the sand and then these are the dirt that you can fill in well these get canceled out because you can fill it these cancel out you fill it well you get left with two holes to fill which is negative two so negative two is equal to two x okay this is multiplying how do you undo multiplication well you divide by two and we get x is equal to negative 1, which is exactly what we had right here on the graph. Well, let's look over here. Well, we always want to undo any addition or subtraction first before we divide by the 2. So, well, here it's pretty obvious, plus 4. So, okay, now we can just subtract 4, and we're going to get negative 2 is equal to 2x. All right, now we just divide by 2, 
and we get x is equal to negative 1. We get the exact same thing, okay? So it doesn't matter how you write the equation. It's still the exact same thing, and I'll kind of go back and forth throughout this video just so that you get exposed to both of them. So let's go ahead and create the equation for this graph. My y value is negative 2, so we're starting with negative 2. My next point on this graph is right up here. So we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. So plus, well, what's 5 over 1? Well, 5 divided by 1 is just 5. So plus 5x, okay? So we got y is equal to negative 2 plus 5x, okay? We want to evaluate when x is equal to 0. So when x is 0, well, look at that. That's my y-intercept, negative 2, right? When x is 0, we're not moving to the left or to the right. It's right there. So we should get negative 2, and let's see if that makes sense. Well, plug in 0, and we get y is equal to negative 2 plus 5 times 0, 5 times... Uh, 5 times 0 is 0, negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2, so we get y is equal to negative 2, which is exactly on the graph. Remember, when x is 0, that's our starting value, which was negative 2. Okay, now let's begin to do solve for x when y equals negative 7. So we have our equation again, y is e you know what, I'll change the color, let me change the color. We have y is equal to negative 2 plus 5x. And we want to solve for x when y equals negative 7. So we're plugging negative 7 in for the y. Now, before I go to do this, I want to look at the graph. Where is negative 7 for the y? Well, negative 7 for the y is right here. Negative 7. It's right here, right? Because this is negative 7. Well, where does it touch the graph? Well, it touches the graph right there. And what's the x value? Negative 1. So you can see graphically what we're trying to do. I'm giving you the y value and we're finding the x value which is negative one let's go to verify this so we always want to undo any addition or subtraction so i see this negative two so notice how it's negative well, what's the opposite of a negative well it's addition so we're just going to add two to both sides and if we do that my friends we get negative seven plus two again if you're not sure i like to think of my negatives as think about a sand one two three four five six seven think about this being you're in a sandy location and these are holes to be filled in well right now you only have two holes to fill in from the and these cancel and you're left with well negative five so negative five is equal to five x well this is multiplying what's the opposite of multiplying you got it my friends divide by five these cancel and we get x is equal to negative five divided by five well negative one which is exactly what was on the graph my friends okay Let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. So I already know the equation, okay? And I'm just gonna rewrite it slightly different. Let me see here real quick. Four, five, one, two, so five over two. Okay, so just wanted to verify. Okay, y is equal to three plus five over two x. Okay, so we wanna evaluate when x is negative 2. Well, when x is negative 2, this is negative 2. Where's the touch your graph? Well, it touches it at negative 2. So I know looking at the graph, when x is negative 2, my y value is negative 2. So let's plug it in. We get y is equal to 3 plus 5 over 2 times negative 2. Now, how can we do this? Well, the way I like to think of this is because this is dealing with fractions, one of the ways that we can do this is, well, we know it's negative 2. Well, let's just put an invisible 1 underneath, and that way it's going to help us be able to do this. And let's just multiply across. What's 5 times negative 2? Well, it's negative 10 divided by, well, what's 2 times 1? 2. And we get 3 plus what's negative 10 divided by 2 don't worry about the negative just think about 10 divided by 2 well that's 5 but it's negative so 3 plus negative 5 last but not least okay we got uh, three positives so I'll put three filled in pebbles and we have five negatives right we're gonna add five of these negatives well these cancel 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 I'm left with negative 2 there it is so y is equal to negative 2 which is exactly what we had there Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is um, solving for x when y equals uh, 13. Well, when y is 13, again, this is my y-axis. Let me change colors. Okay, when y is 13, this is my y is 13 is right here. Well, when does it touch the graph? Oh, we just touched it. It touches it right there, which is 
4. So when your y value is 13, your x value is positive 4. And let's use the equation to verify this. All right, well, let's go ahead and do that. Here's what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just for a moment take this, do this, boom, boom, select, hold on real quick, watch how cool I am, and I like to go kaboosh. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> I take it back. That did not work. Forget it. Let's go over here. Okay, so we got our equation. Let me just zoom down a little bit, okay? We got our equation. Y is equal to 3 plus 5 over 2 times X. Okay, when my Y value is 13, so let's plug 13 into here. We get 3 plus 5 over 2 times X. Well, we want to get rid of any addition or subtraction. Notice this is a positive 3 because it doesn't show a negative symbol. So we need to subtract 3 to both sides. 13 minus 3 is 10 equal to 5 over 2 times x. Let me write that over here. We got 10 is equal to, oops, uh, what we got here is 10 is equal to 5 over 2 times x. Okay. Now, here's the thing, right? Notice we're multiplying by 5 up here, but we're also dividing by 2 over here. So if we want to cancel, if we want to cancel this out, let me make some space here. Okay, let me show you what we can do. Okay, well, I want to divide both sides by 5 to cancel these out, but I also, what's the opposite of division of two? Well, it's multiply, that's why the two goes up here. So notice how I'm gonna multiply both, basically by the opposite, so that the twos cancel and the fives cancel. And so I'll multiply this out over here by two over five. And what I'll do is just put an invisible one underneath. These cancel and I'm gonna be left with x is equal to, well, what's two times 10, we get 20 over what's 5 times 1? 5. 5 to 20 divided by 5 is 4. So we get x is equal to 4, which is exactly what we got on the graph just by looking at it. All right. So hopefully that shows you how to work with these uh, these here. I'm going to leave this rest of the problems here for you to do as an exercise and come to me if you need help. I do want to show you though, right here when it says evaluate when x is 1.5, well, 1.5 is like right there. So you should get something close to four, maybe 3.99. Just showing you that you can get decimals, okay? So I'll let you go ahead and finish these last two problems. Just to show you maybe one other thing is, let's say we have seven is equal to negative three over four times X. How do we cancel this out? I just wanna show you one more time how to deal with these fractions. Well, multiply top and bottom, we'll divide by negative three so that the neg these negative threes cancel. Since the four is on the bottom, put the four on the top. These will cancel, these will cancel. And if you do something on one side, you have to do it to the other. Okay, and then what's four times seven? Well, we get 28 divided by negative three times one is negative three. And just use your calculator to approximate this and you'll get your answer. Again, that's just showing you how to work with uh, any problems that deal with your constant rate of change not being a whole number, being a fraction. Okay, my friends, take it easy.